in the sun piston trainer 32. Now, uh, most common presently is because the speed had increased and uh, power requirements had increased. So, it led to the development of turbojet engines. So, turbojets are more popular now. In that, uh, most of the transport aircraft have either turboprop if the speed is low. Uh, sir, sorry. One engine. Uh, hmm? uh, Hello. Uh, it has sir. a turb turboprop or turbo fan engine in the uh, civil aircrafts we see quite often. Turbo fan engines are seen in military aircrafts also. Then we have turbo shaft engines basically used for helicopters. Now, um, electric engines are being developed for very, very small sized aircraft. So, this is regarding the propulsion units. Now, we'll de see in detail uh, turbojet and uh, turbofan engines. The turbojet engine is based on rate and cycle. So here we have adiabatic compression is the first stage. Then we have a constant pressure heat addition. Then we have adiabatic expansion and we have constant pressure heat rejection. This cycle is used in jet engines. Here we have a, a diagram of a jet engine. Here we can see an inlet, then we see a compressor, we see a combustion chamber, and we see turbine, and we see the nozzle. Through the nozzle, we see the uh, hot gases are passing through. Now we will see the, um, next we will see the turbofan engine. Here we are seeing a uh, you know, primary air stream which goes through the full engine and there is a duct fan, secondary stream, bypasses all the primary air uh, stream and it directly exits through the outer nozzle. So uh, nearly 50% of the air flow is bypassed in the turbofan engine. So, here also we have in the main core, we have the compressor, combustion chamber, and then uh, we have uh, turbine and the nozzle. Typically, jet engine involves compression, heat addition in the combustion chamber, expansion through turbine, and exhaust through nozzle, generating the thrust. Typical turbojet engine has following parts. It has a fan. It has high pressure compressor. Fan means it's a low pressure compressor. That is what is term is fan. Then high pressure compressor, combustion chamber, high pressure turbine, low pressure turbine, diffuser, afterburner, jet nozzle. Afterburners are used in basically in fighters. Then we have the jet nozzle. Other components are gearbox, fuel pumps, ignition coil, manifolds, etc. Now we'll see in detail regarding the parts. The compressors initially were, uh, you know, having in 1950s, the overall pressure ratio was around four. And number of stages of compressor was seven. Around 1980s, the overall pressure ratio had increased to around 11. And we used to have two-stage compression. 
So LP had two stages and uh, HPA had five stages. From 2000 onwards, we have overall pressure ratios increased to 30 and above. And number of stages have increased from three to three LP and seven HP. And even if you if you look at the AL31 FP engine, which is powering uh, Sukai 30 MKI aircraft, it is having four stages of LP and uh, nine stages of HP. So it consists of following major parts. LP compressor, it has got a casing. You have it'll have stated stages of uh, stator blades it'll have discs it'll have rotor blades and it'll have shaft so this um, discs are mounted on the sh shaft and blades are mounted on the disc so on the casing you'll have uh, stated blades and in the rotor blades are on the disc, so they rotate and then create the compression. The shaft is the one which is connected to, uh, see LP compressor um, is connected to LP turbine through the shaft. Similarly, HP compressor also has casing, stator blades, and discs, uh, rotor blades and shaft. So as we have already seen, LP compressor may have two to four stages and HP compressor may have seven to nine stages. So compressor rotor blades are mounted on this, which are mounted on shaft. Stator blades are mounted on casings. Between the two stator casings, casings with blades, rotor discs with blades is positioned. Free stream air passes through nine to 13 stages of uh, stator blades and rotor blades and gets compressed. In addition, there could be uh, sets of inlet guide vents for guiding the free stream air to avoid stalling in various attitudes of aircraft during flight. There could be air stroke hydraulic cylinders with pistons to rotate the inlet guide vents. Blades. The blades consist of stator and rotor and inlet guide vents. Material will be around aluminium, titanium or stainless steel. Blades are usually machined with from forgings and raw metal from forging, uh, for forgings undergoes ultrasonic crack detection. They are all uh, machined with uh, five axis machines. <clears throat> Now we have discs, so it is made of uh, titanium forgings. So it also has titanium active composite rings, graphite epoxy composite material, and powdered metallurgy. So uh, N18 super alloys. Blades can be of uh, titanium forgings. Now we will come to combustion chamber. Next important part is a combustion chamber. In combustion chamber, fuel is added and burnt. The combustion chamber needs to withstand high temperature and needs to hold the flame steadily without flame out. So you can uh, understand the temperatures or around um, 1100 degrees uh, centigrade. That is the temperature to which the combustion chambers are subjected to. So materials also should withstand such a high temperature. So they are made from inconel. Then there are liners, which are all made of ceramic matrix composites or hence alloy materials. Then we must have injectors which inject fuel there. So it may be made of marriaging steel. Now uh, the casing should withstand the temperature. So we may have thermal barrier coatings. Now combustion chamber technologies initially in 1945, it started with uh, 
can type during 1950s it became can annular type and later on it has become annular type you can see the figures here the can type can annular type and annular type uh, combustion chambers Combustion chamber is made out of sheet metal and forging flanges, forged flanges. Circular forming of sheet metal casing is done. Machining of casing and flanges is carried out. Organ arc welding of flanges to the casing. Uh, Fluoropenetrin uh, inspection or chalk test for crack detection. Drilling and machining operations are carried out. And then bench work and tapping and the inspection is using gauges or CMM. So, submetal cutting is also done. So, this is how a combustion chamber is reduced. Now, we will go to the turbine. So, parts of two stage uh, turbine are nozzle guide vanes, turbine blades, turbine discs, uh, uh, turbine shafts. Now, uh, in uh, compressors, we call uh, as stators, same thing in turbine, it is called as nozzle guide vanes. Nozzle guide vanes are usually cast. So these are machined in seven axis uh, machines. They are all joined by electron beam welding. Since high temperature air flows over them, they are prone to wear. Being rotating parts, turbine blades are most complex parts. They are made by, <clears throat> namely, because temperatures have gone up to 1100 degrees centigrade. So we require uh, castings to withstand that temperature. So it's made out of uh, single crystal plates or directionally solidified or equi-x plates. Equi-x plates were the initial uh, blades which were all used in uh, MiG-21s. That is <clears throat> one of those engines which were in MiG-21 aircraft. Now, um, and later on, uh, directionally solidified blades are used now for uh, Tejas and Kaveri engine. The DS blades are used. Uh, single crystal blades are used in AL 31 FP engines, which is used for SO 3 MK aircraft. Uh, both EQX blades and uh, single crystal blades are produced in HAL core output. It has got an excellent foundry. We can, if anybody wants to visit, we can visit and you can see that. They are machined by CNC or EDM process. Subsequently, they are coated out uh, with, to withstand higher temperature. Turbine blade root is made by broaching or grinding. Cooling holes are made by EDM or laser drilling. Turbine discs are made of heavy forgings. They are imported as they require very high capacity forge presses. Heavy forgings are machined with by um, five axis CNC machines. They undergo stage wise annealing to reduce stress. They are bro broached and uh, broaching machines. <laughs> now we can see a uh, typical EQX crystal structure. Then we see the directionally followed by structure. Then we see the single crystal structure. So, you, what is the difference in single crystal structure is you don't have any grain boundaries. So, the trend is toward high, higher turbine entry temperature, improved life, high creep strength, oxidation resistant, corrosion resistant, and fatigue strength. These are all the basic requirements for the turbine blades. So I have uh, I initially I told that uh, afterburners are uh, used in the fighter aircraft. These afterburners are used for um, either during takeoff or uh, in the midst of flight. You want to come back quickly. In that case, also afterburner is used. So afterburner is used for burning unburnt uh, portion coming from bypass. This gives additional thrust required during takeoff. After burner consists of manifolds and burners. 
So you can see the old configuration and new configuration of the afterburners. So initially they were all uh, circular fuel manifolds and new configuration have radial spray bars. Next, which comes in is jet pipe or exhaust nozzle. Jet pipe guides the burnt gases from afterburner to go through, go into atmosphere, giving thrust. The jet nozzle can have additional features by which nozzle diameter can be varied. Uh, in addition, we can have the vectored uh, thrust nozzles. In, for, in fact, uh, AL 31 FP used on uh, Su 30 MK aircraft can uh, tilt the exhaust uh, cone left or right as well as up or down. MiG 21 aircraft engines have nozzle dia control for varying the diameter. So, this is achieved by exhaust cone uh, sections, flaps, and cylinders. Being in the higher uh, temperature zone, jet nozzle sections and flaps are made of inconel based alloy sheets. Sections and flaps are made of sheet metal forming, welding, and coating. Cylinders are made from rods by machining and grinding. Another important uh, part of the engine is a gearbox. Uh, it, it drives the accessories of engine as well as aircraft. What are the accessories? That is the fuel pump, lubrication pump. For the aircraft, it will have uh, similar type of pumps and hydraulic pumps, lubrication pumps. Then it will also will drive the starter generator. So rotation that will go through that. So it consists of a uh, gearbox casing. We have uh, spur gears, which are helical, and we have spherical bevel gears. Then we'll have shafts. Gear cup, gear cup, uh, casing is usually made of magnesium or aluminum alloy casing with internal cavities acting as pipelines because uh, inside there are uh, uh, internal cavities which act as pipelines. Uh, gearbox castings are machined with uh, jig boring machines. <clears throat> then we come to the other uh, accessories. We have main fuel pump, after burner fuel pump, uh, spark plugs, ignition coil, heat exchangers, etc. They are some of the main accessories. They are generally bought out. Other bottled items are many of them bolts, nuts, washers, spring washers, lock nuts, split pins, etc. Other parts are mounting brackets, pipelines, electrical cables, etc. Uh, bearings fall under high value bottled items. Brackets are made from forgings and are usually machined. Pipelines are made by bending as per copper standards. After bending pipelines, they are brazed by high frequency brazing. Electrical cables are made on uh, large tables with layout masters and soldering of connectors, sheathing, cable, and wire markings and other operations are carried out. Electrical continuity and installation resistance are some of the tests carried out on the electrical cables. Blankings are put on the uh, end of connectors of pipelines and electrical cables during storage. This is to avoid any entry of uh, foreign matter. Now we come to uh, loading and design perspective. Basically, um, the entire engine must be balanced. So we have uh, all the shafts are all balanced. And uh, next is both, uh, now it should withstand the high RPM, which is there and uh, similar stresses, which are generated by the shear stresses, which are generated by the rotation should withstand them. Then intake design is critical because air intake uh, at all attitudes of the aircraft, the air should flow through the engine. Otherwise, engine will st stall. Stall means uh, it will not get sufficient uh, uh, air and so uh, it will flame out. So the engine will not be working. So that has to be taken care of. Another important thing is when you're designing the 
engines, you have to take care of foreign body and damage containment. This is another criteria. This is because uh, whenever the aircraft is flying at uh, lower altitudes, uh, we we see the bird menace and a bird hit takes place. And uh, in case of a bird hit also, aircraft should safely land. For that, we must have this uh, design criteria to be met. Another important thing is, you see so many stages of uh, stators and rotors. If the, from next stage to uh, initial stage, if the air leaks in between, the purpose of compression will not take place at all. So, uh, leakages between the blades and casing should be sealed effectively with wearable material with safety margin. So, this is the important uh, thing. So, you have the braids used for the sealing. Uh, another important criteria is fatigue and thermal creep. We have seen in the single crystal blades. Now, I mentioned that fatigue and thermal creep because at high temperatures, the material try to expand. That is called creep. And it will, if it hits the casing, it will damage the whole engine and uh, air, uh, engine will uh, get damaged. Similarly, fatigue. So, uh, the blades undergo a tremendous amount of, uh, uh, you know, load cycles. So, it should withstand millions of uh, load cycles. So, that should withstand the fatigue strength. Otherwise, what will happen is the blades will break. So, these, these criteria have to be properly addressed. In addition, uh, when we go into the aircraft design, uh, location of the engine also becomes important, whether it is uh, slung under the wing or near the tail or uh, inside the fuselage. See, most of the fighter aircraft engines, the, they go inside the fuselage. So, those criteria will come into the effect. <clears throat> Now, I'll, uh, this is the last slide. So here, I will uh, touch upon uh, the engines and, uh, you know, engine manufacturers. Uh, General Electric USA is a major manufacturer of engines. Now, to name our own uh, Tejas aircraft, G404 is the engine which is being used for the Tejas aircraft. And then Tejas Mark II, G414 will be used. Uh, another important uh, engine manufacturer is uh, Safran uh, Snecma, Snecma Corporation under Safran Corporation. They manufacture M88 engines which are used for Rafale aircraft. This uh, company also makes uh, Mirage engines. Now, both being competitors, still they jointly make uh, CFM56 engines which are used both in Boeing as well as Air Airbus. There is a spelling mistake in Airbus, uh, mind me, don't mind. And uh, this, I, I had a chance to visit uh, this factory for uh, Stekma in, in uh, Safran Stekma. So they are making 750 engines in a year and the G is making another 750 engines in a year. That means, uh, you know, 1500 uh, engines per year, they are making these engines and selling. So that is a huge number, which, uh, you know, their virtual monopoly in the world. Similarly, Rolls-Royce is making engines, UK. They were the first uh, collaborators with us in uh, engine division, in HL engine division. So, they made the, well, most of their engines are made, used in our uh, in aircraft, which are produced in uh, uh, Bangalore. Uh, especially Jaguar aircraft, we have uh, Adur engines, which are designed and uh, made in collaboration with Rolls-Royce. Similarly, uh, they also make uh, uh, many other engines which are there used, you know, in uh, whatever aircraft which we produced in Bangalore. Similarly, Safran Turbomeca makes engines for he helicopters. This is used in our uh, ALH and it is, uh, you know, jointly designed. It's called Shakti engines. So, in uh, Turbomeca, it is called the Arduino engines. Similarly, the R2 engines, these are all, uh, you know, the old R2 engines which are used in Cheetah and Chetak helicopters. It is also made in collaboration with Turbomeca. <laughs> Other uh, engine manufacturers are uh, Pratt & Whitney and Honeywell. 
the Honeywell engine is used in the Dornier 228 aircraft. And uh, if you look at the manufacturers in Russia, we have Chernyshev in Moscow, Umpo uh, in uh, Ufa, and NPO Saturn. These are the, some of the Russian manufacturers of Aero engines. Similarly, we have uh, manufacturers in uh, Ukraine. Uh, in, H in India, HL also manufactures Aero engines. So with this, we come to the end of the presentation. So now, how do I come out of this? I can close the presentation, right? Hello. Am I audible? Hello. Uh, hello, sir. Is it done? Yeah. So yes, regarding sir. the presentation portion, yeah. I have finished. If there are any yeah. doubts and any questions or that, I can share uh, yeah sure, sure. Minutes, uh, everyone can take. yeah everyone please uh, uh, share doubt in chat box or we'll take up Hello, I am not able to see the chat box here. How do I see? Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, I think on yeah, top yeah, yeah. it has come. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, but again, it is again it vanished. It came, flashed, and went off. Where do I see this uh, chat box? Because my screen is there. Uh, after I stop sharing, also it is that uh, screen has not gone. No? Uh, any other question? Anyone? Uh, it seems no question, sir. So thanks a lot, sir for making this session and uh, please share me this uh, ppt i'll send yeah, your yeah. Mail, you sir. give me your yeah. email address i will send yeah. you that yeah yeah so i will share with these concerned students so they may get more help and they can further explore what you have you know discussed in this session sir. sure yeah, sir. yeah. thank right. you sir thank you all thank you, uh, thank you very much sir for the right thank you